Hello art stars, uh, welcome to the ones joining us this autumn term and welcome back to everyone that was with us in the summer. Today we are going to be working on self-portraits and we're going to be focusing just on the face and on how to shade it and bring it to life through the details. Now I've gone ahead and grabbed myself one of these little handheld mirrors. They're very handy, obviously, so you can see your face and um, get the detail right, but you can also take a selfie and use your phone as reference for the um, drawing that we're about to do. Now before I go ahead and start, we're just going to be using our pencil today. Make sure you've got a rubber and a sharpener to hand. I am going to be using, I thought, a red crayon to show you the foundation lines and to see the difference of where we end up from where we began. But you will just be using your pencil. I've got a little reference here and this is how I like to start every face. Now you've got several options. You've got a straight on face, which I would always start with a vertical line across the middle. This oval is going to be your head and a line through the middle horizontally as well that marks our eye line. Now, a lot of people, when they draw a face, they think that the eyes are like up here, like a third of the way through our face. But actually, if you're looking at the top of my head to my chin, the eyes are exactly in the middle. So that is always a um, good proportion to remember. If we've got a face from profile, from the side, our, horizontal, our, our vertical line, we draw to one side and this is gonna help us kind of know where the nose is coming up. And then you draw your horizontal line again in the middle, but you don't strike it all the way through. You only come about halfway. If you're doing a face that is three quarters, so, and I consider this the most difficult angle to do. So today in um, my example, I'm gonna do a straight on face, but if you feel really confident and like you've done some self portraits before, you can go ahead and try a three quarters. And that's where we're not looking completely to the side, we're looking about sort of diagonally. And so you only see partially this eye in the back and the nose kind of, you know, blocks a bit of the cheek and the mouth is going to be, you know, different shapes on both sides. So that is definitely the most challenging angle to do. But what you would do is you start sort of curving your vertical line and you shift it to about a third of the way in and you do this to follow this curvature of the of the face and then you do the same with your horizontal line you start at the middle but you sort of curve it so that it goes to where this line is the bottom of the curve meets where your vertical line is and then starts going back up now, if you are drawing someone who's looking up, it's helpful to draw the line curving upward. And same if somebody's looking down, these proportions change a little bit. So it's helpful to draw this line going down. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna put my mirror here, hydrate. Make sure you've got everything in um, your space that you need to work comfortably. 
If you want to put some music that you like on, please go ahead and do that after we've uh, we're done with the video and dive right in. So you want to make sure to make your first um, oval, the oval of the face, quite big so that it fills the page. And here we go. It might be a little bit wobbly sometimes, but we can always adjust that. And again, I'm using this crayon, but you're going to be using your pencil with a very light, light touch. If you feel like you need to practice your strokes, you can always turn your page back. And as we always do in our pencil lessons, you start by doing very strong lines like that. Then you do a few medium. like that, and then you do your lightest ones. And these are sometimes hard to see in the camera. And that's why I'm using a crayon instead. But we've got our oval. Now I'm gonna do my guidelines. So we're gonna go across the middle. and across the middle and we have our prepared start. Now from here on I'm going to go and do a few more guides and that is the eyes and you might find this easier if I take my glasses off. So between our eyes there's always the distance of one eye here in the middle. So I sometimes take my fingers or take a pencil measurement and go on my um, page. So let's say if one eye is about to here, let's center that there. So my first, the beginning of my eye goes here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mirror that on the other side. So I'm going to do another line here and that's just to try and help you keep that symmetry. And so now you take this base, move your fingers, here's where my next line comes. Again, take this space, move it here and this is where my line. And that is going to be the size of each of your eyes. I'm then going to come down this way and you want to go again about halfway of this space. So here I'm going to go halfway, I'm going to do one line here and then another line below that. So this is my halfway line and then this one's a little bit down and this is going to be our reference for our nose and our lips. You can kind of see slightly how that starts forming the beginning of a, of a face. So now I'm going to leave my uh, guidelines alone and I'm going to start filling in. I'm going to put my glasses back on so I don't struggle to see. I'm going to start working on um, creating my facial features. So I like to always start with the eyes because I think they're in the middle, they're our window to the soul. It's a very important part of a portrait is the eyes and the expression that you're giving off. So mine, the top goes, you know, curving normal and then in the bottom there's a little dip. So I'm gonna start by doing this curve and don't be afraid to do a lot of lines. We can always come back in and um, adjust later. So I'm going to do a line a bit like that, come into the other side 
like so. Then let's look a bit at the nose. And what I like to do is, again, I'm going to take my glasses off. If you take a pencil or something straight to your eyes, you can see where your nostril comes in relation to where your eyes are. So it's almost at the beginning of the tear duct here. And I like to do a curl that begins here where the nostril begins and then ends up in a little squiggle for the little nostrils. So I'm gonna come follow this line down and I'm gonna do one and squiggle for the nostril. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So down, and this is great practice to doing slightly more symmetrical work. Can you see it's the beginning of my nose? And now my lips, you wanna look at the little dip in between your lips and the curve that this makes first. And then look, if your nostril ends here, your mouth ends almost in the middle of the eye. So I'm gonna come down the middle and do a little dot here. And again, following this line down, middle of the eye, do a dot and a line. Then you can look at what line comes in the middle when your mouth is closed or in the expression that you're, you know, painting yourself if you're grinning. Look at um, the, the shape that your upper lip creates in the bottom and the shape of your bottom lip. So, this one does like a little wiggle up top, then it comes down and then it does another wiggle up top and curves down again. And my bottom lip is quite a um, sort of a curve. It doesn't have many wiggles. It's a pretty straight up curve, so. And, and it's a little bit bigger than my top lip. And I may have drawn the mouth a little bit big. Yes, I think it's a little bit big. So I'm gonna come in and adjust. You can always come in and adjust. If your eye notices something's off, try changing it and see what happens. So I'm still trying to extend this line to the middle, but refining it a little bit. Sometimes moving stuff a tiny, tiny bit makes the biggest difference. And that is the beginning of our lines. Now, just to give myself a bit more reference, I'm going to start putting in my ears here on the side and where my hairline comes. So, with my hair the way it is, you almost only see the bottom of my ears, but I'm going to go ahead and draw them anyway. And so the top of your ear usually comes up to the middle of your eye. So where this line strikes through the middle, it usually means more or less where the top of our ear begins. Everyone's different, so it might not be. It might be that it's a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, but more or less it's a rough guideline. It's a good rule to follow. So, And the bottom comes kind of where the top lip begins. 
Okay, and the hair. Let me show you those. I've just done very basic and we always construct more and more on it as we build. So, straight hairline. I'm going to take again my vertical line as a reference. And between the top of my head and my eyes, it's hard to show you from this angle, my hair starts about a third of the way. So I'm going to mark here. I'm going to say there's some curls that come here. And I've just very gently wiggled, wiggled. I'm sorry, I just realized that that was a little bit too gentle for you to see. But because my hair's curly, I'm just doing little squiggles. If your hair's straight, you might want to do long brush, like uh, pencil strokes. Okay, so let's go in and detail it a bit more. So let's go back to our eyes. And I'm going to start doing pupils and eyebrow. So, let's see. And in your eyelid, there's always a line that comes... Let me see if I can get you guys a bit closer here. Um, that comes from sort of the middle of your upper curve out to the sides. So I'm going to come and find the middle here and do a crease coming this way and a crease going the other way. Like so. And that just gives a bit more idea. And you want to try and observe where your eyelid um, folds and creases and what shape, depending on our eye shape, that's going to be different for everybody. So pay attention to those details because that's what's going to make it look like your face versus someone else's. So let's see eyebrow now. And it starts off pretty straight, a little bit further than my eye begins. And it goes kind of up here and then curves and extends a lot further than my eye. So I'm going to make sure to extend that properly. And when you're doing eyebrows, it helps to do short um, uh, strokes so that it feels a bit already like hair. I'm going to show you. We go here and do follow the direction in which your hair would be laying. And that all just helps add to the, rea like, the reality of our faces. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and come in and do the other side a little bit. I've noticed that I've got a bit of a ring around my pupil, a bit of gray between the brown and the white. So I'm going to go ahead and do like a little medium shading there straight away. Always looking back at your mirror or your picture reference to see where things line up, what the light is like. So I like to always, um, in the pupil, leave a little corner where the light is hitting it. Because where the wind, my window's at, it's hitting me quite square. 
It's, all, it's the light coming from the window reflected in my pupil. So all those little things add. So again, the crease of our lid. And this one I drew a bit too far in. This one folds to about here. And then on the outside comes to the end of the eye. And now again, the eyebrow. This one tilts a little bit more. This one's a bit straighter. So I'm gonna come in a little bit from my eye and do a slightly tilted line here. And again, I'm gonna look where my arch is. If I'm looking straight on is sort of where my my pupil, not my pupil, but the brown part of my eye ends. So that's where it starts curving back down. And the more you fill in, the easier it'll be for you to see the difference and the placement of the different sized things. There we go. And you can see this one's a little bit different to this one, but that's okay because my eyebrows are different anyway. So I'm going to leave that, but if I wanted to be more precise, I could go back and adjust that so that they're looking the same. We're going to do a few little strokes for our um, eyelashes as well, and you might want to do that very thinly for now. And then as we're shading, we're going to come and uh, thicken those up. So just very light strokes and very small. And you can kind of see the difference here where I've done those little brush strokes versus not, it starts looking a little bit more like it. And then my bottom ones, they do like a little, you can do the curving of the eyelash, especially the more you see them towards the outside because from the way you're looking at the face, you see that curve more. So these bottom ones, I always like to do the little curve. And then they get a bit straighter as we go into the center of the eye. Like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and work more on the nose and we're gonna start working a little bit of the shading in. So if you notice, for example, with the way the light is hitting me, this shade that my nose casts is darker on this side than this side. So I'm gonna try and put a bit of that in now. So there's a space here between where sort of the, the top of the nose ends and a little curve into the eye. So with our light touch, we're gonna go in and do a bit of that curve. And you can always use your finger to smudge it a little bit like that. And you want to try to make it a little bit lighter on, or I will, on the one side because the light is hitting me from one side. And this one kind of goes that way towards into this part and a different shading comes in here. So again with our light touch. And start creating a little bit of dimension. So, we've got our nostril here that is dark, dark, dark. 
And then there's another tiny curve from where the sort of this top bit of my nose is. So I'm going to go ahead and in my very light touch do that as well. And it goes towards the top of my nostrils. So this part is all a bit shaded. And we go over to the other side, which is a lot darker. But you can start by doing the same amount of shading and then going back, smudging, building on it until you are happy with the difference in your shading. So this one's going almost halfway through my eye here. And there you go. Slowly, slowly, building, building, it starts coming to life. And so here I can see the shading starts uh, higher on this side. It almost continues on from here. And because I'm moving, the shading changes a little bit. So I've got to adapt it every time I look over a little bit. And that's okay. It's sometimes easier working from a photograph if, um, if that's proving really challenging. But I think there's something quite special about doing a self-portrait from live from your own self as you're looking down at the paper and your face. Okay. And so now I'm just going to carry on down to a little bit in the mouth and chin. So the little dimple here between those ridges. I realize I've drawn my mouth way too down. I see where my reference line is, and that should be the middle of your lips. And now that I was looking at the shading, I realized that that's what is what was wrong. So I'm gonna try and recreate this just a little bit higher. Super quick, that is looking Better. And you can see it gives me a little bit more chin space, which feels more correct to me. And I can see a little bit these lines here. And you can tell better when I smile. It's the lines that kind of come into my cheeks. But there's a slight shading there. And it goes kind of from my nose to here it very very gently and on this side you can tell a lot more and sometimes you'll find that if you're rubbing a lot your finger starts to get a bit um, dirty with the with the graphite and it sometimes on its own can create a very thin shade or you can switch fingers if it's not giving you the desired look just gonna do that Bit. And then here we can see that there's like a line here in the chin. And below that, there's a bit of shading. You don't see it from this angle, but from where I'm looking at myself, there's a dip here. And then I've got a little bit of a split chin, a tiny bit of a dimple. So now I'm going to come in and from my guideline, refine this. So we all have different shapes, right? Some people have more square chins. Some people have more round. Mine is slightly angular here and then a little bit sort of squared off here. So I'm going to do that. And a good tip is always to start from your jawline here from where your ear ends and bring that shape in. So I'm doing like a little 
dimple physically in my line and then a tiny bit of shading upwards to help establish that sort of roundness to the chin. Like that. Okay, and I know it's starting to get long, so I'm gonna accelerate a little bit on the rest of the features. You always are gonna come in and do a bit of shading here. And sometimes like here, my hair is in the way, but if you see your, um, the sides of your face are always gonna be a little bit darker than the center, if you're looking at it straight on. So, a little bit of shading from where the ear starts here. Maybe where your mom would put blush on. If you do your cheeks like this, this is kind of where that shade falls a bit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and come in and do a bit of the hair. You know, my hair's a little bit wild, so I'm gonna let the lines be a little bit wild. You could also do a mixture and create these strong strokes kind of to, to create a sense of the hair first and try and do them with um, a lot of pressure, quite dark lines. Like so. And then if you want to create a little bit of sort of, I guess, the shine. So you see where the light is hitting here. So it's dark, dark, light. You're going to go ahead and do a little bit of shading on top. So you start off dark and you start getting lighter and lighter and lighter and touch. Rub a little bit, but not too much or too hard because you already have those lines going the other direction. And then again, dark to light coming in from the other side. And can you see how that suddenly starts looking like a super wavy bit of hair? So that's a good trick. You know, you can always layer different textures. And I'm just kind of trying to follow the curl and then where maybe one bit of hair would be in front of the other one. Stop the strokes. So you can see with the curls, this comes here and where the loop begins, I skip and then start my new line here. And that starts looking more like curls. I'm gonna come back to my chin here, which I skipped, uh, my neck, which I skipped when we were doing the chin. Um, if you look at your neck, it kind of almost touches where your jawline and your ear is here. Obviously, if you're looking at it from a side angle or you're doing three quarters, your neckline's gonna start back here, way beyond your ear. But the trick is to look at your original oval and sort of cut a bit of the corners off. And that's where the neck's gonna come in. And my neck's quite long, so I'm gonna try and recreate that a little bit. And then it curves here. And same on the other side. We slice the corner of the oval off and the neck starts there. And we're just going to do a reference line here of sort of where this bit in my thorax is. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to finish the other half of my hair, but suddenly this half looks almost finished, doesn't it? What a little bit of hair can do. Okay, 
and there you have it my self-portrait I guess without glasses on looking forward to all of your creations on our chat good luck and please take your time if you've got freckles or moles or any little details to your face make sure to add them in like I've got this guy here that I haven't done I could always go in and add a bit of a mole there endless things you can do I love drawing freckles if you've got them have a go it's really fun you do lots of little dots in different uh, pressures some medium some light some dark and you get that constellation effect so good luck and see you on our chat bye